Hello guys, it's again, it's Matt, and today we have another video. Thank you all the members, all the patrons. Make sure to subscribe. We are trying to hit 50,000 subscribers. Thank you all for the 19,000. So let's keep it going, guys, and let's go. So today I wanted to basically do a quick video talking about five examples of counters between the US and USSR that we will probably see in the future. And especially and specifically, in the soonish kind of future what i mean with soonish well i mean this year next year maybe a little bit later than that uh these aircraft especially aircraft right um they are kind of they're not made to counter each other remember the us had their own designs and the ussr had their own designs but in in theory in logic in doctrine they fit in the same role and that's why I wanted to talk about this. And remember, I'm not talking about other countries because the US and USSR will always be the main producers of many types of models at the same time. Uh, most of the countries produce only one or two models. Uh, and, you know, the USA and the USSR, they produce it a lot of models of aircraft. So each had their own, like, objective and doctrine basically behind it. So let's talk about five examples that we can see in the future, right? So, uh, first of all, obviously, I think more modern versions of the F-16 and MiG-29. So, yeah, the first one, F-16C Block 30 and the MiG-29S. They're both basically from the same year, uh, 1987, kind of. Um, they both turn better than the original models. They have a better radar than the original models. And F-16 in particular have a little bit of more engine in the afterburner. So, yeah, specifically on the radar and turning capabilities, they are just both better than the original F-16As and the MiG-29, like, quote-unquote As, right? It's not really called As, but the MiG-29s. So, uh, it would be making sense to see that in the future, they both can use MRAMs and the R-77 as well, which could be a factor of them being added. Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean, the MiG-29S, we have two models, the 912S and the 913S. Uh, most of them were uh, upgraded from the 912s, but the 913 also had some models, so we can see both of them being added, right? So, yeah, very, very cool uh, two counters to each other that we can see. The second one is, I think it's an obvious one, the F-15C, uh, maybe an MSIP version or something like that versus the SU-27S. I would say earliest variant, nothing too crazy. Uh, in the future, they could receive the MRAMs and the R-77s as well. Uh, there are upgrades to the radar of the SU-27S that could um, make it carry the, the R-77. Uh, it is hard to find information on how many of the SU-27Ss actually got that upgrade, but it can be done. Uh, so even in a future update, it can be added in the turning capabilities they're very similar uh in the performance of it and acceleration trust to weight everything like that the radar they're all very very similar and very counter to each other remember these two they are the heavy eaters the heavy fighters of the 80s so uh, they are a little bit more capable than the f-16s and the mig-29s right in the sense of they are made for long-range engagements they are made for long-range uh, flight, right, uh, escorts, high altitude interceptions, while the F-16 and the MiG-29, specifically the MiG-29, were more of a short range interception, the F-16 being a more of a, a light fighter, multi-role uh, uh, kind of situation, right? So very different in doctrine, these two aircraft, and we might have to wait a little bit to see them, but they need to be added together. Um, the third example that I wanted to talk about is navalized versions of a MiG-29, so the MiG-29K, specifically the 1989 version, versus the F-18C. Uh, they're both basically from the same era as well, late 80s, right, or the 90s, aircraft like that. Remember the MiG-29 from that era, never actually saw full production service, only when it got... Uh, upgraded in the, the 2000s or something right and uh, then we have the modern MiG-29K but back in the day it was just a MiG-29M uh, upgraded to be able to land in the SNS Tbilisi which was renamed Kuznetsov later uh, and the F-18C I mean we already know the aircraft 
And I think they are very, very similar in purpose, the same way as the other were. So they are multi-role aircraft, navalized versions, light fighters, very mo modern and more modern than the other aircraft that I'm going to talk about in the sense of the F-14 and the SU-27K. Um, so they're just very, very good. They even have uh, air-to-ground raiders, which are very, very modern stuff. Uh, both of them have that. So yeah, um, the MiG-29K having eight pylons, the F-18C can carry, uh, I think it is technically eight missiles. Uh, or no it's i think it's six missiles right i i can not remember if this c could actually take two more missiles but a could only take six but still even with that i mean if we get a more modern version of the sparrow could be a thing and it could be very very interesting and of course these two can later use the r-77 and m120 as well the fourth example very good one f-14b versus the su-27k or rather the su-33 right uh, they both basically have the same purpose in the carrier. Uh, they are basically fleet defense, long range fleet defense to destroy bombers, to destroy large, uh, you know, fleets of aircraft, interceptions and anything like that. And also they can do some sort of air to ground as well. The F-14B is a little bit more uh, better on that sense, but still uh, remember the SU-27K or the SU-33 is very similar to the SU-27S. It's basically the same aircraft. It's nothing like the MiG-29K. The MiG-29K is a, a whole nother aircraft from the original MiG-29s. And the SU-27K is basically the same as the normal one, but it lands on a carrier, it has the canards, it has the extra power in the engines. So yeah, it is a more up, an older aircraft, so it kind of fits the meta to be countering the F-14. It wouldn't have any Fox 3s initially, uh, so yeah, I don't. It, it might have today, like it got an upgrade to use the R-77. I can't confirm that, but the R, the ER, the R-27ER is already plenty to fight an F-14B with M7Ms, maybe the M7P, uh, maybe the M54C. Uh, the ER would just suffice, you know. And of course, it can carry extra two missiles than the SU-27S, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, it could, in theory, take like four R-73s and then eight DVR missiles, which is, and I mean, R-27s, right? So imagine an aircraft with eight R-27s. I think it will be able to counter some M-54s, right? So yeah, uh, it would have less of one thing and more of the other compared to the F-14B. And of course the F-14B having more engine than the A mainly, this is the main difference between that. Of course it has air to ground uh, night capabilities and other stuff like that if I'm not mistaken, but still uh, uh, guided stuff, etc. But the main thing about the F-14B is the extra engine power, which will make a lot of difference in compared to the A, right? And then the final uh, fifth example of these aircraft that will probably be added together is the F-15E versus the SU-30M. Uh, the F-15E, remember, is the Strike Eagle. It is the version, the B-placed version, multi-role version of the F-15. Uh, it, it has an air-to-ground radar. It is very, very modern, much... I mean, it's just one of the most modern versions of the F-15E. Obviously, I'm talking about the late 80s, early 90s version, not the, like, 2020 version that, they, everybody, uh, that the US uses. Uh, but still, it would be a little bit worse than the turning capabilities of an F-15C, but everything else would be just the same or better. So, very interesting aircraft, and the SU-30M would be basically the same, right? It is an aircraft that it is made to be multi-role, as well as an interceptor. It's basically to do everything. It would be a little bit heavier than the SU-27, so it would turn a little bit less, but the principle is the same. It would do everything else, uh, like, well, right? It is an aircraft that I, both of these particularly, I don't like too much. I prefer more lighter aircraft, but still, they're very interesting, and I think they should be added together. And then a bonus tip, if, or a bonus thing, and a bonus example, if you will, that a lot of aircraft in the full, the, the far future will have it. Uh, we will have it, right? So uh, these are more like soonish future, as I said, this year, next year, maybe a little bit later than that. Uh, but in the soonish kind of uh, far, further away than the soonish future, so like from two years more than now, you know, or something like that, we can see an F-18A, E, 
Super Hornet against a modern MiG 29K, a modernized SU 33 maybe, or even a MiG 31 to be the counter of the F 14D, a MiG 144, or even a Su 257 to be the counter F 22, of course. Always the Russians and the, or the Soviets will have counters in doctrine for the US. Remember, I'm talking about objective, I'm talking about aircraft that are just made to have the same objective not that they are made to be the counter to each other the f-14 wasn't made to be the counter of su-27k obviously but uh, the objective is to uh, have the same objective and to be the counter in the game right but anyway these are five examples of aircraft that we will see between the us and ussr that can be countered to, to each other in the fighter department especially uh, but let me know in the comments what else you think can come. Of course, the Su-24 with the F-111. We have other options, of course, more A-10C against the Su-25TM or something like that. We have other options as well. So leave it in the comments what you think about it. Make sure to subscribe and I see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. See you.